I'm Louise Frutte. Um, I'm an M365 consultant, uh, Power Platform developer, Microsoft MVP, uh, member of the PNP team. I love Lego and stickers and community and graph and the number 42. And uh, you can find me on Twitter if I'm not joining these calls. And I'm Carmen. Um, I'm uh, a Power Platform consultant based in Belgium. I'm also a serial learner, so I constantly like to learn new stuff. And I love shoes. I love reading. I love Taylor Swift. She has a new album out since Friday, um, if you're interested. And it's red. <laughs> it's red. It's red. So it's red season right now. Um, and uh, today we are going to talk to you about Provision Genie. And we want to start with explaining um, why we built this thing that we built. Um, because, as we mentioned, a lot of our customers were asking us for something to provision teams. And we both felt that um, the out-of-the-box uh, feature to create teams, like create an empty team, doesn't really fit users' needs because they usually don't know what you can do. They don't know that you can have additional libraries. They don't know that SharePoint is in the back end and that you can have lists and all of these cool things inside of your team. Um, and on the other hand, um, a lot of provisioning solutions work with templates that then provision a certain number of channels with names and then maybe a list them somewhere in there for planning or whatever. Um, and that also doesn't fit users' needs because they always want something that's slightly different. Additionally, people can't really articulate their needs. And that is why we wanted to build a solution where we blend learning with the actual requesting of the team. So we explain in the application why they would want different channels, why they would want an extra library or a list in their team. Um, and that is how Provision Genie started. Um, and we have the, um, a couple of concepts that we want to share with you, and I will just put them all on the screen. Yeah, and bring it all on, Carmen. <laughs> yes. Yeah, bring it on. So, um, so as you might see, so we put a lot of thought into this, and also uh, it took a long time uh, to really develop this. But I think it was worth it to uh, really focus on a very, very good UI in the first place, because we felt if we go for a Canvas app as the front end, and then this Canvas app looks like usually Canvas apps look like just like ugly and slow and a little bit buggy. And we have those buttons that scream to you, I am a power app and my developer does not know how to um, make a, an app like look like a team's native app, then users won't be that likely to adopt the app. And they will feel like there is some kind of friction in between of their experience that they get in Teams. And they are a power app that we want to use them in Teams. So uh, we built this application using the Teams UI toolkit. So that is a framework that is mostly used by our ProDev um, colleagues and um, shows them how a button should look like, how um, a table should look like. So how all the UI components should look like, but usually power apps don't look like that. We just like applied this to our Canvas app so that this app really looks and feels like Teams Native. Yes, uh, and then for the back end, um, we didn't actually go with a Power Platform solution. So we created the first um, version like the proof of concept, can we do what we want to do? Um, we did that in Power Automate, but then for the actual solution, we decided to go for Azure Logic Apps, which if you're familiar with Power Automate, you can do Azure Logic Apps as well. It should not be, you, should, you shouldn't be afraid of it because it's the same UI, it just has some extra um, features. Um, and those extra features is why we went with Azure Logic Apps because with the Power Automate Cloudflow, that flow will run in the context of the user that is triggering that flow. So either the user that created it, if it's like um, um, an automatic trigger, or um, the user that actually clicks the button, um, which is not what we want. We wanted this to run in the context of an app so that we can then, um, this is enterprise ready, it's more um, reliable, it doesn't depend on the user creating it, leaving the company and there, or there being like um, a service account for that. It's just uh, owned by the organization. Um, you have a lot better developer experience because you can 
you can you do have the um, visual um, designer, but you can also have a code view so that you can tweak little things. You can more easily copy things from one logic app to another if you want to split that up. Uh, and it's a lot easier to monitor than a Cloudflow, uh, which is why we went with Azure Logic Apps. Yeah, exactly. So, and next thing related on the uh, Azure Logic Apps is, of course, we need a way to authenticate against our Graph API because every magic, of course, is um, backed up by Graph. But we did not feel that we wanted to have an app registration because an app registration, it forces us to have an app secret or a certificate. Uh, let me tell you, if there is a secret, there is, a, is the potential that there are leaks as well. And also, um, we just like felt like we didn't want to uh, put that into a key vault because that would mean that we need to have then the credentials to log into that key vault stored somewhere. So we felt like, hey, this is not really a superior solution. So we went for a managed identity. So managed identity is um, a way for everyone who's not aware right now to give your application an identity in the cloud so that you can authenticate against without the need of having and maintaining and rotating keys or secrets. Um, and stuff. And uh, so all of our calls work with the managed identity. Uh, the managed identity is also part um, of the deployment of which we'll talk just like a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, and then as for the data, we did go with Dataverse. Um, of course, we had the option of going with SharePoint, which we also did for our first proof of concept. Very quickly set up a SharePoint list or a couple of SharePoint lists, put it in there and then see if if it works with the Cloudflow. Um, but then again, we were thinking about, okay, so we want to really make this an enterprise ready solution. We want this to be reliable. Um, we want it to work well with the Canvas app. And that's why we went for Dataverse because contrary to SharePoint, which is not a relational database, Dataverse is. Um, we can have role-based access control with the security roles that are built in. So we can decide which, um, which requests a user does, they can see. Can they see everything? Can they only see their own or the ones from their team? You can decide all that in Dataverse. So you have a lot more granular control over what people can see. The same if you want to do something for admins later on, um, they will be able to see more than a user does and maybe they can, um, they can also do more than a user does. Um, as I mentioned, it's a relational database because we do have several tables that we are storing our data in uh, and there are relationships between those tables. So it was important for us to know that that data would be stored well. Um, and it's more performant when you, um, when you combine it with a Canvas app because it's built in the same platform. So the calls go a lot more quickly if we want to get data from Dataverse or we want to write data to Dataverse. It's a lot faster than doing it to SharePoint and also then doing it to another um, SQL database. Hey, Carmen, quick question. Craig yeah. actually had it. Uh, are you using Teams Dataverse or full-blown Dataverse? Full-blown Dataverse. Okay. And of course, we have a good reason to not just like do the uh, uh, little sister Dataverse for Teams because so if you do Dataverse for Teams, then your Dataverse um, database is then tied to the life cycle of the team. And if we speak about this very organizational context, then this feels wrong. So this is just like plain wrong to do that. And I guess this is more a question of, can I just like work around the additional license? And whenever we ask ourselves to do so, um, we're holding this wrong. So I know no one wants to pay extra, but sometimes you need to do if you really want to have a very robust and uh, scalable enterprise grade uh, solution. And uh, this is why we chose um, to go with Dataverse without the first things. Super. Thanks for that great explanation. I'm sure that helps everybody out. <laughs> okay. So um, next thing is uh, the deployment. So uh, when we decided to really build this as an app and not only to have a proof of concept or a minimal viable product or just like pretending to do so, but to really put a product out there, we chose to open source this because no one of us wanted to make this um, a product for their customers. 
are not a solution for the customers as well, but we wanted to open source it. And this means that we needed to make sure that our solution would be deployable to other tenants as well. And if you go for Azure Logic apps, then you need to put that into an ARM template. And of course, the solution itself is uh, the zip file that you can then download, but we have an entire deployment guide um, to make sure that you can deploy this into your tenant as well. And uh, we have um, right now, we could announce our first major uh, community contribution. So uh, shout out to Gavin Barron, uh, who's not only a dear friend, but who worked with us on our deployment script uh, to um, deploy Provision Genie. So first we had manual steps to deploy the solution, which required just like you going to the Azure portal and just like clicking a lot of buttons until you were at the point where all Azure resources uh, were ready in your tenant so that you could actually deploy uh, the solution from our template files and he automated everything with us together and it's really a major uh, step forward with us so thank you for that and uh, it proves the power of open source and community yes uh, and talking about um, open source and the deployment guide how long does it take to install but i know you ladies could install this thing way faster <laughs> The most. Yeah. So okay, if, so, if you um, were brand new to Power Platform, what do you estimate? Can you pull it off in a day? Um, if you want to deploy this with a new script, if you know what you're doing under five minutes, if you don't know what you're doing, it will take about half an hour because you first need to educate yourself about security roles, which are also part um, of the process or application user, but mostly dataverse stuff. But if you know what you're doing, it takes less than five minutes to deploy that into a tenant. Super. Wow, that's awesome. That's always the hardest part when you open source something is making it easy to deploy for everyone. I think so. So I think um, Carmen just like uh, left the building, but then uh, rejoined the call again. So I got uh, thrown out of the call. Yes. <laughs> good to see you back again. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, so we, what we still wanted to talk about before we jump into the actual demo is um, the documentation that we created because as Louisa mentioned, this is an open source um, solution that you can find on GitHub. And we also have a website, uh, it's provisiongenie.com, where you can find all of our documentation. So we haven't just uploaded the solution to GitHub and then uh, written a quick explanation of what it should do. Um, we have created in-depth documentation about what are the components? Why did we make certain decisions? Why did we go for Dataverse over SharePoint or um, full-blown Dataverse over Dataverse for Teams? Why did we go for Azure Logic Apps? Um, what is our roadmap? What do we still? What are we still working on? What do we want to do next? Um, the deployment guide that we mentioned, how you can do this, which is now a lot easier than it was um, two days ago because of the awesome work that Gavin did. Um, the core components with information on everything. For example, um, the overview of Dataverse. Which tables do we have in Dataverse? Um, what are the most important columns? Um, so you can see that we have a request, and then a request has channels because a team has channels. Um, we, have a we can have libraries, we can have lists, and of course we can have multiple of these as well. Um, and then a library and a list have columns in them so that you can also link all of that. And this is our data model in Dataverse as it is now, as the solution is available. Um, but this can be easily added on to, like we are doing, we are working on members now, which you will see um, in the demo that we are about to give as well, that we will add members and additional owners to the team as well, which then creates a new relationship. And this is why Dataverse is, was for us the way to go, because Relationships, when you're talking about teams, if you do that in, if you want to um, model that in a data structure, you will have relationships between different types of data. So that is also why we went for Dataverse. And then I guess we can jump into the demo. Yes, please. Okay, so what you see here now is our Provision Genie is already added as a personal app to um, Teams. Um, it has a beautiful icon, so uh, thanks Michael uh, for uh, doing the um, 
the provision genie logo so we have a lot of shout outs because this yet again is a community effort and what you can see is we first um, try to educate our users so we have these four cards and uh, we thought um, staying on track of um, everything that you need to do just like your task management so that people would not confuse now chat with a task management uh, tool and say, hey, Carmen, could you please do this or that and then by chat? So because that is not better than doing the very same thing by email and uneducated users would do so. So we educate them and tell them, hey, if you need to uh, take care of your task, we can give you a SharePoint list so that you can do that. And you might ask yourself, yeah, but least there is a tool for tracking your tasks that are group related in M365 and that is Planner and this is kind of the elephant in this room because the Planner API and sorry for getting just like a little bit more technical uh, does not give us app level permissions and without app level permissions we can't go for a managed identity and then we need to have a workaround with a messy service account and then this can't be MFA enabled and this feels like uh, this feels messy and uh, as if we shouldn't do that. And this is why we chose to not do that, but provide people with a SharePoint list that mimics the behavior of a planner plan. Just like has all the different uh, columns that we find on a planner um, task and uh, educate people how to do this. And uh, we heard it at Ignite, board view is coming. So um, it will even be a little bit more uh, from a UI perspective, but from a developer experience, we get the great SharePoint API uh, endpoints in a graph and can more easily deal with that. Second thing that we educate is on uh, conversations like um, please don't start every time a new conversation. If you want to reply to what are ad mentions for, please don't overly use uh, notifications and something like that. So we educate people not only how it works, but what are some very good practices on how to get started? Because yet again, usually uh, people who are new to Teams and yes, there are still people new to Teams, you can't believe it. Um, they can't articulate what they really it want. Then we educate about having better meetings because we know we are stuck in meetings way too long, so they take too much time and then there is no time left for the actual work that should happen just like in between of um, the meetings. So um, we try to make some good suggestions on um, how to really excel at meetings and perhaps just like not attend all of them just because you got um, invited. So that is a good thing and we educate about recordings as well. And once we have that um, last step on educating um, users, and comments closing that is about organizing your content. And this is, of course, all the documents and files that will live in different SharePoint libraries. So we introduce that concept of please don't um, don't do these cascading subfolders that you know from your file, file sharers, but start to have just like start embracing metadata and start to embrace um, different document libraries because that is way more superior and will uh, lead more easily to that goal of, each, of um, finding your files and retrieving the information that you were looking for in the first place instead of just like keeping you busy with just like clicking through um, folders and subfolders and so on. OK, so this is the education part. And as you can also see, um, we do not only have a nice navigation and a main part in this app, but on the left hand, uh, no, on the right hand side. So that is what I struggle always with. Uh, on the right hand side, we have this sidebar and this sidebar um, tells you what you can do on this screen. It's just like the how to use this screen on every single screen. And of course, on this welcome screen, it tells you what this app is about. About. So we did not just like hide it somewhere in an about tab or so, but we display this, um, what you can do here. And on the next screens, you will also see that we provide additional learning material for each and every single topic. Just like if we talk about members, then we provide learning material on just like what is the role of a member or what should I do as an owner or what is a guest and provide additional links and videos to that so that um, our user can educate um, 
himself or herself more easily, but blends this with the um, request, uh, with the process of requesting that team so that it is uh, more like a combined experience instead of I uh, will always need to switch context again and again. OK, so um, shall we provision a team? I think we shall. Yeah, I, I think we should do that. So um, Carmen is um, starting uh, that provisioning process. And of course, the very first thing that we need to do is we need to um, give it a name and this would be Provision Genie Demo. And we give this team a nice description. And then we can ask, we will ask two questions. And the first is, do you want to have a welcome package? And the welcome package is just like um, a link that gets added as a tab to the channel general. And you can define that tab during the deployment process. So it's global over all teams that get created. Why is that? Because we think it could be learning a material. So it could be something like an intranet page or a document library, but it could also be just like some external link that you want to display. So where you feel like this is something that every team's user should know and should read and should already be there when they have a new team. Second thing is, um, do we, does our user want to have that list for their tasks as we um, already mentioned? So this is optional. We only provision that if our user indicates that they want um, to have this. And we also introduce um, the gallery view already here so that they um, know what they get. OK, so thanks for closing this pop up again. And once we have this, we navigate to the next screen. That is perfect. And um, I would say we can add some members to our team. Thanks for doing this. And another member. And let's add an additional owner. And as now Carmen is demoing this, um, I'm the additional owner um, of that one. And perhaps you saw that um, uh, depending on what is already selected, we um, we would just like um, a display or not display certain uh, certain buttons to just like guide our user what they can do right now. And now it's just like so you can see Yannick is already a member. And now Carmen tries to add Yannick as well as an owner and we get a notification with a notify function which says, ha, ah. so in order to make Yannick an owner of that team, you first need to remove him from the members gallery because that wouldn't make any sense if he was both a member and an owner and vice versa. So if she now would like to add Louise again as an owner, she would get uh, an error as well, because I am already in the gallery of um, an owner. So um, there is an error, so she can't proceed with that, but she needs to uh, delete my name and then add another one or no one as well. And you can see in the sidebar, so the um, details will give you detailed information, just like going through the steps so that it is totally clear what the user is expected to do right now. Um, so it is just like the, the help, um, but that is not hidden, but um, super um, obvious for our users. And if they need just like additional information, like, yeah, but what is the difference between a member and an owner? Then we give them additional resources and tell them, hey, um, if you want to, uh, we have resources for you. So you can just like click them um, and educate yourself and then just like um, continue with that process. And of course, this opens and an additional tab and it's always Microsoft resources or resources that we really, really trust um, to um, to educate users. OK, so we proceed on the next button. And we would like to create some channels and perhaps you might have noticed that each and every single screen already contains this check mark. Yeah, but I don't want that. So in this case, we have a, I don't want to create channels. And if we check this, we can proceed to the next screen already. So this is a new feature which we implemented uh, right now. So um, there should be a warning. So what should happen with the channels that you already put in there? But um, yeah, so it is um, work in progress. So under construction. It is under construction. Yes. Yeah. So you can see the preview here of the next release. So that is um, that is not anymore the first release, but that is already um, yeah 
in progress for the next release. Um, so we um, review our channels and perhaps Carmen made a mistake. And perhaps we want to um, delete the channel again so we could just like re add this so there is nothing just like written in stone and our users always staying in control what happens here. Proceeding here, Carmen clicks on the next button. And next thing is we want to create an additional library. So, you know, um, as SharePoint is one of the back ends of a team, we already have one document library, but perhaps we want to have another one with just like different metadata than the first one. And um, I want to have a description, which is multiple lines of text for my image library. Uh, then I want to have a status, and this is um, a choice. And we have, of course, column values for these for this um, choice column because we need to provide them because it wouldn't make any sense to have this empty. So we would just like create this option set, and after that we will go ahead and save this library as well. And yay, we get a pop up because it's always good to just like motivate your users and tell them, hey, you're doing things right. So uh, that they stay in this process. And now we do pretty much the very same thing and provision a list. So you might know it is basically the same thing. This is a different template um, in the same call that we later make um, towards graph. But uh, we will just show um, a few different column types uh, right now. I think this was release date exactly. And then we will save this. And yet again, we get a little success um, pop up. And now it's time to check out which means we get a summary of all the things that we already did. And we are asked to review that. So before we reach that point of no return, where we actually say, hey, and now submit this because I want to have this team. And we see our team name and the team description and who's the owner. So the first owner and if they want to have a welcome package and if they want to have this additional list for tasks and we see the members and owners that will be provisioned for us and we display them here so I can still review that and go back if I made a mistake. Then I will review my channels and even those are here. And then I will review my library and my list and I will get the column. Um, the column names um, here so that I can review that as well. And I'm still sure, yes, I'm, I'm exactly doing what I wanted to have. And then it's time to check out, which means um, I need to select this checkbox and check this. And only then this final submit button will be not be disabled anymore, but uh, will be in edit mode so that I can submit the data. And this will patch all this stuff that you saw before into the respecting data uh, first tables. And from there on, our logic apps will pick up those values and will provision all the assets that our user requested in the Canvas app. Yes. Um, <laughs> so as Louisa mentioned, the logic apps patches the, uh, the canvas up, sorry, patches the data into Dataverse, and then that will trigger our logic apps. Um, and yes, we have multiple because we decided that we wanted to um, be able to have components and that it was easy for us and for potentially other people, since we were going to open source it, to reuse some of the components that we had. So that is why we have one main logic app which takes care of the logic of actually provision genie. So it takes the data from Dataverse, it puts that into a certain, um, a certain um, format, and then it provides that to each of the child logic apps, which then take care of the actual doing things. Um, so we have, for each of the things that we are doing, we are adding people. We are creating a library, we are creating a list, we can create a task list, which then in turn calls the create list flow again, because this of course has the, uh, the, the calls to graph to create an actual list. We have one that starts to create a team, and we also have one that um, provisions the welcome package. And the main flow takes care of orchestrating all of that. So if we take a look at the um, designer, you will see that this uh, looks um, almost exactly alike to Power Automate. So if you can do that, you can do this. That is the same journey that I went through. 
when um, starting with provision genie. Um, and the logic apps will kick off when a record is created in Dataverse. Um, then we will initialize some variables, do a couple of things in the background, and then we are going to make everything ready to create the team. So we are going to look at what are the channels that we have, um, and then we will put that into a certain format, and we will provide that to our child logic app, which will actually take care of creating the team. Um, let's take a look quickly at the um, create team, because I believe that we are running out of time. Um, so let's take a quick look. What does the create team um, logic app do? It does not have any link to Dataverse, so it can be reused for anything else that you want to reuse it for as well, as long as you provide the information in the right input format. Um, it will first create a group for the team because we are starting from a group and then teamifying that group. Um, so we create the group, then we create the team. So the teamification, process of that group, and then we will configure the channels. Um, very important when we configure the channels, um, two things. We uh, make sure that we hit the files endpoint so that our users don't get this annoying error. Your files aren't ready yet when they first open the team. Um, so we make sure that that files folder gets provisioned. And we get rid of the wiki because we don't like the wiki. Um, it's not reliable. If if it, if you, someone accidentally deletes it, it's it's deleted for real, and you cannot get it back. Um, we want to prevent our users from accidentally get, losing their data, so we don't want the wiki tab. We delete the wiki tab for every channel that we provision. This is non-negotiable for us. And then the output from this um, logic app goes back to the main logic app, and then that is used to make sure that the libraries, the lists, all of that. Um, gets provisioned into the right SharePoint site that is linked to that team so that it can also, that it's all in the context of that team. If you want to learn more, go to provisiongenie.com. If you want to contribute, you can find the link to GitHub. Um, we love contributions because we cannot do this on our own. Um, we have had help up to this point as well from Gavin, uh, but also from Michael with the design, from Yannick um, with the debugging. So um, if you want to contribute as well, we highly welcome it. Carmen, Thank has you. the team been created already? How uh, long does yes, it usually take? The, um, it go. can take a couple of minutes yeah. um, because, we, because the team's endpoint, the way that it is set up, you first need to provision the group. You need to wait for that to be completed and then for the teamification to happen. Um, but it has been created. It's the second one. This is the one that I did um, earlier, but it has been created in the meantime. So we have our channels that we provided. Yeah. Um, we have the training material pinned in the general channel because we did ask for the um, for the welcome package. And if we open the file step, we see that it will open immediately. Um, so none of that annoying stuff. If we open the site um, in SharePoint, uh, course. Let's skip this. Um, this is always we, a fun solution to build because <laughs> after you click the button, it's really easy to go. There it is. There it is. It did it. It did it. Yeah. Um, so, and we will have the roadmap list that we provisioned. We mm -hmm. have the images document library, and we also have the task list because we did ask for the task list. Um, one of the things that is on the roadmap is to make sure that these get pinned in one of the channels because for now they are in the SharePoint site in the background, mm -hmm. which is not ideal. Um, but that's something that we're that we want to do in a next release is to ask the user also which channel each of those libraries and lists should be pinned to so that they can access it from Teams immediately as well. Awesome. I have a fun enhancement idea that I put into the one I built. I'm going to follow up with you both afterward. And, cool. and since we already wrote yeah, the code cool. and that code's open source, we could merge it in here real quick, I think. <laughs> cool. It would be very cool. Thank you for the awesome demo. This is amazing. You two put so much time and effort into this, not just in making it and building it, but the whole website, how we built it, the, everything. That is just awesome. Thank you so much. I bet we could uh, do a deep dive on it for an hour with you easily. So much you built. Thank you for Happy sharing. Happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, let's chat about it. Maybe there's a cool spot to deep dive and, uh, and spend another 20 minutes on. I'm sure there is. Thank you very much. Thank you.